agreements with Budweiser, Coca-Cola, and Gorge Heist, and made sales into Sam's Clubs and Costco. As founder of Willet Launch, she is focused on finding and promoting original new products into select markets. She's also the author of some books that she has here that she has available for sale tonight and have to place at Amazon. And today she spent a good two plus hours quietly listening to how many? Seven, 17? Yeah, I think so. A lot of good ideas coming from here. It's a good group, I can tell. 19. 19 different products. Of course, hopefully she'll end up with some. Yeah, I bet I will. Thank you. Your turn. Thank you very much. Thank you all. For those of you that came early, it was so great to get to meet you um, early and see your ideas. I, that's what I'm about. I'm actively looking for products. I travel around a lot. And I'm, I do my own social networking, so whenever you talk to me online, it's really me. Some people have you know, companies that do that, but it's really me. So I try to be responsive. I try to be fast. But you know, if I'm traveling, sometimes it's a little slower. Um, I'm going to see if I can click here and make, make this. Will you? Thank yeah, yeah. you. Let's move on. OK, so I'm not going to talk a lot about me, because you can find out online everything about me. I've lived in the same house for a long time. My husband of 32 years is around here somewhere, high school sweethearts, the whole thing. He's really the inventor. I'm sales and marketing, really. I have a few little ideas, but he's really the inventor, and he's why we got into this. And, I, I worked in these clubs, and I understand what it's like to be in the leadership of these clubs, which thank you to all of you that are leaders, because I know how much time and money and volunteer manpower they put in to make this happen, and to all of you that come, it's so important. I'd recommend that every month you set yourself a goal, that you say, here's where I'm at with my product, I know that here's where I'm going, and by every month I'm going to take a small step toward completing the progress toward my goal. That's how that's how you make it happen in inventing. So I just want to encourage you to keep coming to these meetings and invite other people, because you really will save yourself thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars by not making the mistakes that most people make, and you all know what they are. OK, so go on. OK, so I think it's important whenever anybody's coming to talk to you about your idea, you want to know how do they make money. Because that drives the advice that you're getting. You know, no one is perfect, and everybody has a lot of different ideas. And there are a lot of service providers in our industry, and they're valuable. You know, you, you need patents, you need prototypes, you need marketing, you need demo videos, you need all these things. But you can burn a lot of money doing the right things in the wrong order if you're listening to service providers all the time, or if you're misunderstanding what someone's motives are. You know, I, want, I once, both Stuart and I, stayed up till three in the morning one time talking to a man who we thought was going to invest in our product. We we're thinking he's an investor. So we're like, it's 12 o'clock at night. I'm thinking, when is this man going to go to sleep? But he's gone on and on and on. And it got to be like two or three in the morning. And finally, I said to him, are you going to invest in our product? And he said, no, I'm trying to sell you a service. Oh. And I was like, oh. <laughs> If I'd only known that like five hours ago, <laughs> that would have been great. OK, so how I make money. Uh, two ways, really. Um, the Will at Launch, um, I'm not really, I'm, I'm an independent consultant for the, the founders of Will at Launch. It's not my company, but I am in the group of looking for products, putting our time and our money into licensing products for As Seen on TV specifically for the As Seen on TV category, which I'll tell you more about. So in that capacity, I'm a direct licensee. I would offer you the licensing agreement and pay you the royalties. And so I don't take any cash from you. Now there are ways, there's deals that we have where inventors can pay if they want, but that's all risk versus reward. Most of you don't want those deals. Most of you want the fully funded licensing agreement. So I get paid on the back end. I'm not paid any money until a product is selling on the store shelves. That's when I start making money. And that's when everybody in our business starts making money. Everything up to that point of the product sitting on the store shelf and selling is an expense. Me coming here is all my own dime. It's an expense of money. It's an expense of time. Everything we do to get that product on the store shelves is an expense of money and of time. And so, you know, we, we try to bet wisely. 
And that's what I try to teach inventors to do too, is bet wisely. Because you've got a lot of ideas, and there's a lot of products on the market, and there's a lot that fail, and there's a lot that succeed. Nobody has the magic answer of what's going to fail and what's going to succeed until you test the product with a real consumer, and they give you their real money. That's the only thing that tells you if a product is going to be a success or not, is that transaction. And so that's what I do with Will It Launch. I also, I, I wrote the book mostly because I wanted to answer everybody's questions to save my own time, because everybody has the same questions. And because I have about 20 years experience now with launching our own products into market, licensing other products outside of TV, and now licensing products inside TV, that it, it's just, I think it's a really helpful book. People don't make money on books anymore, so I didn't do this to make money. I, it's, I've probably spent more on it than I'm going to make. I sell it for $19.95 online. I sell it for 10 bucks when I come out here to the show because I, to the show, <laughs> because, <laughs> because I want the information to be in your hands because there's inventing techniques in here and I want a relationship with you beyond the idea that some of you showed me today. Maybe that's your big winner, maybe not. I know you all have a lot more ideas and that's another reason I'm here is I want a relationship with you beyond these initial ideas because you all have so many and it's a very competitive market we're in and there's a lot of knockoffs with the Asian um, and Amazon and companies. And so what I want is a relationship of trust where, where I trust you because I'm going to be giving you some confidential information sometimes. And I need to trust that you're going to steward that well. And you want to trust me. You don't want to think that I'm going to go, you know, knock your product off or do something unethical with it. And I won't. I've never been accused of that. I've never done it to my knowledge. So I want you to show me your ideas first. I know you have a lot of people that come through here. You're in DC. This is a, a hop in place for innovation. You've got access to a lot of people. You might have competitors or strategic alliances, whatever. There's a lot of places to show your idea. I'd like you to think of me first. And I'd like you to think of me beyond just your idea, but actively helping me be first look for other people's ideas. Because once something goes on the public domain, we have competition then. It doesn't mean we can't do well with it, we can, but we have competition. So it's a little bit different game. I'd like to see things earlier. Um, so these are here for 10 bucks and stewards can take a credit card or you can just pay with the cash if you want. I've got only like 14 bucks, there's some others somewhere. Okay, so, oh, back on that last one. But, okay, so Inventive Ideas is our company. We started 20 years ago, started it with our products, um, his tailgating product, and, and some other products and you know I can't say that we did everything right in fact we did a lot of things wrong I really feel like I've made every mistake in the book so thankfully I'm still here 20 years later and we've been able to build a lifestyle business that you know is offered a lot of fun for us to get to travel around and go do things but I I like every business am just you're living on on the dime that you have paying off hoping that you get another winner soon that's the business. You have to go from winner to winner to winner to fund your lifestyle. And so that's why I work so hard, because I'm still trying to make a lot of money on inventing. Um, I do outside of TV things, too, because only a, a very small percentage of the things that we look at are as seen on TV wins. About 90% of the products could be money makers in other categories. So for those deals, I do, instead of charging inventors cash, I'm basically offering licensing agent services because I have a lot of contacts. So anything outside of TV, if, if you have a finished good and you're trying to sell it, I've got sales channels either online or through retail. And in that capacity, I could function maybe as a manufacturer's rep, take a 10% sales commission on the wholesale, or I could function as a licensing agent and I could negotiate the licensing deal for you. If it's my contact, then I have to, I don't have a way to make money there and I don't want to charge you cash. So I've got to take a royalty split is the only way. So I take 50% um, if it's my contact because it's cost me a lot of time and money to develop them. And 25% if it's your contact. And I'll, for that, I'll negotiate the deal. I'll use my own licensing agreement paper. You're in, you're a, a fly on the wall, so to speak but I'm basically running the show and negotiating the whole deal and talking to them and taking them through the process that I know works to negotiate a licensing agreement that actually pays money. 
because that's a whole nother deal. Right. So many licensing agreements are signed that never pay money and you end up losing a year or two years and nothing ever becomes of it and you never make a dime. And I, I just can't do that. I've got to have cash. So I wanted to make money and I want you to make money. So I'll, I'll do that. Um, product scouts. I also have about 62 product scouts around the world that just actively are looking on the public domain, looking in their circles of influence. I like to have two or three at all these clubs that I go to because, you know, you've got new people coming through here all the time. And a lot of you are going to forget about me. You're just going to, you've got your own lives, your own business, you're going to forget about me. But some of you won't. And sometime a new person's going to come in here and they're going to have the next As Seen on TV winner. The Topsy Turvy was found at a club just like yours. And a good friend of mine who just found it made like $750,000 just finding it, not, not counting what all the other people made. Lots of money. Uh, some of you might think of me and might say, hey, I, I know that woman that came through. <coughs> Let me send the idea to her or talk to the inventor and connect me, and you'll get a finder's fee for that, up to $100,000 per product. So I want you to think of me, and I want a relationship going uh, on long term. And then the inventing workshop, I'm not going to say a lot about that. It's a nonprofit we form. We're trying to do these online inventing things. Um, there was a man here, Ray, I think he's gone now. He's done one of them with us. And we actually have a couple of products in, in the funnel, and then we split the revenue based on all the people that were in that meeting. And then sometimes we'll fund patents, and we'll fund some young inventor groups, and things like that just to kind of add value. Okay. Excellent. Yeah. Okay, as seen on TV. It's not a company. A lot. It, it's really, it's a category. That's what it is. There's such misunderstanding about what it is. It's a section of shelves, predominantly at Walmart, CVS, and Walgreens, but also a lot of other places. You can tell by the red logo, that's open, uh, public domain logo. The shelf space is thriving on physically small, little gadgets that solve an everyday problem. These are what I want you to invent. We don't need a patent. And that saves most of you ten, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000. And some people are like, oh, how can I be protected without a patent? It's a first to market strategy. Um, we honor the product owner as the inventor. If you bring it to me and you tell me you're the product owner, you have a prototype, you show me a little demo video, we honor you as the product owner and you get the inventor royalties for that. We're not concerned about patents because these are short life cycle items. They're not a 20 year on the market item. Some are on the market that long, but most are not. And in As Seen on TV, one to five years is the general life cycle. So it's a very short, small life cycle. This shelf space, you should be looking at it every time you go in. It thrives on inventory turns, constantly new products, new products, new products. So you'll notice it's up at the front of the store almost all the time, or predominantly on end caps, which is prime retail shelf space. And the reason is because we put millions of dollars into television and online advertising to generate that turn. We actually do not make money on the TV side. People always ask that. The TV side is expensive. You've heard how much uh, airtime is for media buys. It's expensive. We don't make money there. What we do is we drive traffic to the store level. So for every one product that sells on TV, I know that 10 to 15 products are going to sell at the store level. You see it on TV. It functions as advertising. One person buys it at the store. 10 to 15 people buy it. That's where the profit is. That's where the big money is. And these are grand slam big money winners. Every single product you see on that shelf has jumped through a lot of hoops. The other use for the television, for the media, is to test the marketing pitch. So if you see a product on TV, you'll see it on TV, but then you don't see it in the store shelves, you'll think, hey, I like that product. That's kind of cool. Maybe I like it. But then you go to the store shelves, and in three to six months, it's not there. That failed. That was not a winner. And so we use TV to test, one, is the product a mass market appeal, a grand <coughs> slam home run, where every product on here is going to sell five to eight million pieces per year. At one point, the pet egg was outselling the Snickers candy bar. 
So it's, we turn a ton of product. The average inventor is going to make 330,000 worst case scenario, about 4.2 to 5 million normal. Okay, so it's huge. And you know, um, that's in a life cycle for it. Yeah, good question. You know, if you, I'll show you the math in a minute. Um, so it's a lot of money, and you think you don't need a patent? Okay, that saved me that money. I do need a well-made prototype, uh, because we're going to use your prototype to test uh, the consumer's receptivity. So we, we, with Video Magic, will make that prototype look as if it's a market-ready product, and the consumer will actually vote with their real credit card, and that's going to tell us, is this a potential winner or not? Once we find out it is, then we're going to put it through a whole other series of two-minute tests before we've ever manufactured it. We're going to put it through a whole other series of tests, and those tests are going to judge, is the name right? Is the feature right? Is the marketing pitch right? Because we're going to get that math formula to be so tight that when that thing rolls out nationwide, we know we get the 10 to 15 to 1 ratio. So you can almost predict the revenue. It's really a science, and it's very proprietary, and it's absolutely, I'm just so blessed to be able to get to look behind this curtain because I'm just amazed. And I'm amazed at, at how many products don't make it, and that's another thing to pay attention to. Yeah? Sorry to interrupt no, it's okay. in the middle. But what is that testing period? What is that name of that? What is that called? Well, right. we call it a two-minute market test. And it takes about 120 days from the moment we decide to test something. We can have something in 120 days. We can have a full two-minute TV commercial done, shot, aired, right. tested, results. Perfect. So it's lightning speed. And then if that, if that succeeds, then we move into another round of testing because we're testing the features, the price point, uh, the pitch. And during that testing, we're also sourcing, manufacturing, and costing. So I don't, we don't, you don't even have to worry about the cost. As an, as an inventor and inventing for us, these are simple gadgets. These are not complex products. So if anything that's under $50 selling, if you find a product selling for $50 on the market now, and it's an <coughs> inventor that launched it themselves, they made it and sold it, they are not getting economies of scale. They do not have the volumes. If it's for $50 retail, we can have that thing selling for $19.95 easy. That's the easy part. The volumes, all that's the easy part. So you don't have to worry about pricing. You don't have to tell me what the cost of goods are. We don't really, we can figure all that out. We don't really need any help in that area, which is great for the inventor. <coughs> what we want is good quality ideas that solve everyday problems for the 35 to 70 year old woman predominantly. The 35 to 70 year old woman predominantly buys 90% of all consumer go goods in every category. <coughs> but specifically in ours. So those are good targets. Okay, um, let's move on. Okay, let's talk about the money. I like to talk about money. If, just to run the math, if the wholesale price was $11, so we're gonna sell it to Walmart for $11, and they're gonna mark it up, and they're gonna sell it for $19.95, right? Your royalty is paid off of the wholesale. That's in all of your licensing agreements, you want your royalty paid off the wholesale because that's an auditable, trackable number that people can't mess with. You don't want it off the gross this or that where they can take all their expenses out and owe you nothing. You want to pay it off the wholesale. So if the royalty is 3% of the wholesale, that's $330,000 for every 1 million units sold. That's what you would make as the inventor. So times 5 to 8 million pieces per year. So the numbers get really, really high. As a finder, as one of my scouts, you would make one fifth percent of that, so it's 27.5, but that caps at 100,000. That's if you just show me a product that's uh, early stage on the public domain, you get that finder's fee, or if you've introduced me to somebody. Now people always say, hey, can I double dip it because it's my friend? We try to be ethical and real, just like you want to be ethical and real. So. No double dipping. If there's a finder, be a finder. If you're the inventor, be the inventor. This does not affect the inventor's royalty. So if, if an inventor comes to us without a finder, it doesn't affect, it, it's not coming out of their money. It's a separate pool of money. Is that too confusing? Anybody have questions about the money? 
I was, when I used to be sitting in your shoes and somebody came up and started talking math, I would be like, <laughs> <laughs> so some of you are really on it. Stuart's really on it. Okay, okay. Okay, types of agreements. So, the full licensing agreement, this is what most of you want. The average everyday inventor with lots of ideas wants the fully funded <coughs> licensing agreement where you pay nothing. There's no submission fees, there's no charges of any kind. Now, it's harder to get that because you're basically coming to us and saying, we want you to assume all the risk. We have to, these tests, the two minute TV test cost about $50,000. So if, if we're gonna assume all the risk and then we're gonna spend all the money making it, we've gotta like the product well enough to wanna do that and you've gotta be a reasonable enough person that we think, you know, we're not gonna, we're not gonna be slowed down. Because sometimes the inventors slow us down. They have a lot of questions, they have a need to know. That's fine, I remember being that way, but in a full licensing agreement, the inventor is not involved at all. You do not get to be involved in the process. You don't get to give your two cents. You know, you're not paying any money. You're gonna, gonna get a licensing agreement and we're gonna do what we know how to do and if it succeeds, you get a check. But if it doesn't succeed, then you get the rights to your product back. So there's very low risk for you, but you're not involved. And, and you, you know, you haven't earned the right to be involved if you haven't launched products. If you want to be involved, which a lot of the crowdfunding people do, we have a partnership agreement, and that's where the inventor, or usually this is for entrepreneurs, this is for somebody, they've already put 10,000 into their patent or 20,000, maybe they bought a garage full of them so they have 20 to 30,000 invested there, Maybe they've put a website up and they've got marketing. You could easily be fifty to eighty to one hundred and fifty thousand dollars in on your idea. Easy. If you put that kind of money in, you might not want to let it go. You might not want a full licensing agreement, especially if you have a successful crowdfunding campaign. Because then your head's a little bit bigger and you think, "Oh, I have a successful crowdfunding campaign, so I'm going to be able to make this happen on my own." And maybe you can. Maybe you don't need a partner. Maybe you can go on on your own. But what I'm finding that more and more is most inventors do need a partner because they can't move fast enough. They can't. There's too much competition. They don't have those channels built. They need a partner. So for those kind of crowdfunding people, they can come in for somewhere under half, somewhere between 17.5 and 25. Now, you will find a lot of service providers that offer this kind of a deal in our category, and that's where you got to know who's who. Because you can go to a media production company and they'll sell you a, a commercial. You know, you can buy a commercial from a lot of people. But if they don't have the right testing metrics platforms built in and the right strategic alliances within our category, which is very, very small, our category, it, it's just going to be, it's not the same thing. So you do have to know that. Uh, now, the consulting agreement, this is more for small to mid-sized companies that have already distribution into retail. Because, and really what it is for them is a fast fail test. If you think about, if you imagine that you're already a small to mid-sized manufacturer, you already sell goods into Walmart, into Target, you know, it takes you like a year to get in. And then once you get in, you, you've spent, what, half a million dollars on product, on goods, and then you put that good on the shelf but then people walk by and they just don't buy it. It doesn't sell. You know, you don't really know why. You just know they didn't buy it. Well, the Walmart buyer, the Target buyer, they say, get that product out of my store because they are paid on inventory terms, right? So they say, get that product out of my store. And by the way, I'm not paying for it and I'm not paying for the shipping back and you're gonna take it all and I'm not paying the bill. And so the manufacturer has to eat that. And that could easily be 300,000 to $500,000 easy. And so what some of these small to mid-sized manufacturers are doing now is they're paying us the 50,000. We don't get a royalty. We're just doing the test. And, and if it fails, then they say, oh, thank goodness, we found out for 50,000 in 120 days that it was gonna fail. That's a lot less expensive than two years and half a million dollars to find that out. Okay, so they're liking it for that. There are occasional people that do this successfully it's rare for people that don't have distribution already to be successful, but there's examples of success in everywhere. One consulting agreement, the, um, uh, the MyPillow guy, he did consulting. 
and he's built a successful business in Minneapolis. And, you know, he's partnered with the operational people in Asian on TV now because he had to, to get it into the stores. But he did a lot of it on his own. He didn't need any help from anybody. He's paid everybody to do it for him. Um, Pillow Pets was another one. You might remember that from like 15 years ago. They were a successful consulting deal. You know, there's a lot of successful partnerships and there's a lot of successful licensing agreements. So from my perspective, when you bring me a product, it doesn't really matter to me what deal you want. It's, it's the same to me. I, want to, I only want to spend my time on products I think are going to succeed, though. Okay, so just to clarify, 100% of test means you're going to create like a two-minute commercial, kind yeah. of like that guy with the seal thing in the boot, right? right and stuff like that. And then that's going to get X amount of air time for X amount of time. So that sort of guarantees that in $50,000 is going to get you enough air time. Yes. On that. So if you had a product though that's a very narrow niche and you go to a cable network for that though, aren't they still giving you random times? It might be two in the morning for one product. In other words, if it was yeah. a product like one of mine is for fishing, but then it winds up on a hunting show all the time. I mean, that right. sort of skews the results. Good question. Um, that If it's something narrow like a fishing product, it is taken into consideration what channels you're putting it on. But if you look at the data, which this is where it gets out of my area of expertise. I'm not a data person, I'm a people person, but all the guys on my team that are data people, they just love these numbers. These sheets come back with literally the eight point type and just filled with numbers. And the data over a period of years says that it doesn't matter in our category when it airs, the math formula is still the math formula. So it was something like that, it would matter a little bit. It would, if it's a fishing product, you don't want to put it on lifetime, you know, channel. There's certain places that would be obviously that's probably not going to be a fit. But on general, people that fish watch other channels <coughs> other than just the fishing channel too. So inventors, if a product fails, this is where the hard part is. If a product fails, the inventor always says you ran it at the wrong time or the creative was bad. Um, we have very rarely, in the five years I've been watching, because I said all those things, I fought the whole system for the first three years, until I realized very rarely has a product ever succeeded that, that failed the two-minute test. It's not like it succeeds other places. Every now and then it does. Every now and then. But generally, the formula is the formula. So it, the air time doesn't really, when it's aired, if it's two in the morning or it is low cost airtime, so it is airing at those off weird times, but still X amount of people had an opportunity to buy it and X amount of people did buy it. So that part of the math is still the math. And this thing's been going on since 1985, I think the industry started. So running commercials at odd times and having a very uh, big database of products tested, it's still the formula produces winners or it produces known failures. So, but it's not foolproof, for sure. All right, but part of this also is people are calling in. I mean, obviously the results are people that actually call to order it based on the commercial. Or go online. And then they have, or online. And then they have the upsales, where if you're going in, you're also then trying to get the two or three accessory pieces that go in it, because all of that then becomes part of the overall database. The more you can upsell things with additional items, yeah. the better as far as the overall test, right? True on the uh, rollout side. When you're rolling out the, uh, roll, the product after a successful test, all that's true. The upsell makes a huge difference. Everything makes a huge difference. But way at the front end, in the bleeding edge front end, when we're doing a single two minute test, the things like, things like the uh, upsell and the offer don't matter that much. They matter a little, they do matter a little, but they don't matter to the degree that they would down the road, that's a fine-tuned tweaking. At the beginning, the first two-minute test is a simple X amount of people bought it and X amount of people didn't. It's a straight, is this a Grand Slam home run or not? It's kind of like a yes, no. It's either a Grand Slam home run or it's not. And if it's not, it gets dropped and moved on. If it's yes, then it goes through another series of tests that it has to jump through. And if it does, if it fails any part of that, it's dropped. And then if it succeeds, it goes through. And then what you're talking about is down here. 
where we, the offers being tested, the names being tested, the price points being tested, but you already know you have a winner now. Right, but even Mike Lindell on my pillow is, he's got an expiration date. He can only be on for so long and eventually the market's just going to dry up or does a market like that really can go on? No, I think it usually, every product has a bell curve. Every product has a <coughs> bell curve. And so it's, you know, it starts out low sales and then it moves up to higher sales and then it starts de depleting. And now he's trying to build a different, he's not building an as seen on TV business. He's trying to build a pillow business. And he's using as seen on TV to generate consumer awareness. You know, so he's segmented out as seen on TV, but it will have a life cycle at some point. It won't be, but he's moving into more traditional advertising at some point. So he's more of in a mature stage of his business. So he's got different problems. But I think we're saying the same thing. Yeah, I think he's, you know, again, after a while, there's, you, know, you run out of people that are going to buy him. Right, every product has that. Which, and as seen on TV, that usually happens in one to five years. Uh, yeah. Behind you, a question. Yeah. Uh, two questions. One, do you do a web test? Uh, we do. We do surveys is another level of testing that we do and web tests, so there's three levels of tests. No product roll, rolls out to the shelf space without the two minute test. That's the grand hoo of all tests. But we do do surveys, and this is interesting about the public domain. Good question. If you have your product on the public domain, on crowdfunding, anywhere on the public domain, there's people like me and my team scouring the public domain, looking for product, all right? If your phone does not ring, maybe we didn't see it. Uh, but if your phone does ring if, and you don't take the deal, someone is going to knock you off. I'm sorry to have to say it so blind. It won't be me. I promise you it will not be me. Someone will knock you off. If, if you do not take the deal when a major billion dollar company calls, and this is a bad part of what the, the world that we live in now, and I did want to have a real conversation with you about this, because you have... Amazon that has disrupted all of consumer sales and everyone is scrambling. The Asians and the manufacturers are scrambling. All the U.S. companies are scrambling and winners are harder and harder to get and because competition comes in more quick. If you look at crowdfunding and Kickstarter, we have a product called the 60 Second Salad. I'll share it with you in a minute. Before that crowdfunding campaign was even finished, three days in, it was looking good. Three days in, you could go to Amazon, and at least four Chinese manufacturers were selling the 60-second salad using our name, 60-second salad, and our assets from the crowdfunding campaign, and selling it direct to consumers. Well, there's all these lawsuits right now. Amazon says, that's not a problem. We are not knocking off your product. We are merely providing a platform for buyers and sellers to meet. That's all we do. And it's not our job to protect your patent. And so you can go to the Chinese and fight them. Um, the, there's all these lawsuits right now. You can look them up. If enough people start suing Amazon, yeah. it's going to change. Eventually, they will have to get on board. And that's what's going to happen. But that's not my problem. And it's only your problem if, if you, you know, get into a problem. I say I want to make money on products. And as, as a person spending a lot of time and money to come around, I want you to make money too. I need your products for me to make money because I'm you know, trying to help leverage them. I don't want to fight those battles. I don't want to fight with a billion dollar company. I think of it like you know, we're a bunch of peasants in a community and a billion dollar company, the king, comes and says, I love you, fair maiden. I give me your hand and I will take you to the palace and you will dine with my, my people. And you say, no, thanks. I'm on my own. I, I don't need that deal. Uh, you go on, and uh, they're going to choose someone else. They're going to choose a competitor. Someone is going to go. It's just not going to be you. And I, I don't want that to be me. I don't want to fight. I don't have enough money to fight Amazon. I don't have enough money to fight a billion dollar company in a patent infringement suit. I would much rather say, Thank you, King. This I know this is not really marriage. This is where the analogy falls apart. It's not marriage. It's not my life. It's my product idea. I've got a lot. Yes, go. Make all the money you want. Give me my little pittance of a $4.5 million royalty, and I will say thank you. Thank you very much. That's what you should do. You should take the deal. Say thank you. 
right. Now, when you launch though in these two minutes, that you do have to have uh, like a thousand ready to go, right? No, you not know, for two minutes. Sometimes you they don't. Because no. then they got to wait, what, four to eight weeks or something? Uh, you know how quick we move? The manufacturing is easy. There's so many plants in our category that are already queued up, ready to make stuff. Now, that being said, making the prototype and the, the smartphone demo video yeah, is really, really important. That's what is your job to do. It's not your job to cost it out and figure out how much it's got to be manufactured. These are simple gadgets. Your job is to make a good prototype, a nice, market-ready looking prototype. Something you can be proud of, and it needs, to, it needs to be able to at least partially function. We can do video magic, but the better it can be, the better it, it will be. And to make a good two-minute uh, demo video, you can use a smartphone, post it on Dropbox or YouTube Unlisted, send me a link. That's all I need to move forward. Okay, so what are the characteristics? Excuse that, me, Carrie, are you going to make these slides available so people are, don't have to uh, take They're in the book. Okay. Yeah, you, people I, just mean, I, I probably okay. can. They're on our website. They're, they're already just, available. I've <coughs> followed me socially. I've published stuff all the time. Um, it's mass market. It's got to solve a problem. That's the biggest thing. People don't buy stuff because it's a talking pet bird very often. Those are anomalies. The fish, those are anomalies. You have to solve a problem that people talking are willing birds. to pay to solve. That's the number one thing when you're inventing. And in here, I do have a, a whole section on inventing techniques. Um, pricing, under $50, don't worry about the cost, don't worry about the manufacturing, don't worry about that. Make a simple gadget, a simple little gadget. That's all we need. Um, it's gotta be unique, that's a big, big thing. Uh, we're spending a lot of money to put it on the price shelf. We can't have competition, there can't be, you, I can't spend $3 million on media for this one product and have you go to some the hardware section and buy a knockoff or a something similar, you know, when so it's got to be unique. We don't want a lot of competitors. We want it to be very unusual. Uh, practical, believable, easy to explain. Questions on the criteria? Okay. So I think what I want to do now is do the deal or dud. Uh, dud. So I'm going to give you a little insight as to my life. I look at 30 to 50 products every week for sure and often per day. 90% of them I can't help with, but the ones that I can help with can make everyone some money. And so, and, I, and I'm just one person. Just because I can't help doesn't mean you can't make money. There's lots of places to sell product. Okay, so this was the scrubby. And when I show you these videos, I want you to look for a couple things. Because you, you don't have to make a professional video like this, but you can borrow techniques from these kinds of videos. So you want to watch them. And there's a, for certain things like the use of animation. You have to have a prototype. People send me these anime. No, I can't test an anime. I, you know, I, I need a real product. Now, there is a place for animation, but only in describing the magic of the product. So I don't, will this play? Can you click on it? Hopefully it will. There's no sound. I thought I plugged that. Thing in for the sound. Yeah, it's good. Do you know the Swiss audio here? Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm sorry, I really wish you could hear this. Let's try something. Okay, he's going to try something. The Dirty Vods, ah, the Dirty Vans, the tall stack of dirty dishes, yeah. oh my another goodness. family oh my dinner that's Thank turned you. into a big family sized mess. Mm -hmm. And if you think your sink spray is going to help, better bring a raincoat. Now there's a better way. Introducing Scrubby, the amazing new sponge and pad adapter that turns your ordinary sink sprayer into a supercharged cleaning machine. So you can wash and rinse all of your pots, pans, and dishes faster and easier than ever before. 
Scrubby attaches to your standard sink sprayer in seconds, and Scrubby's unique helical threads create a secure grip on these reversible cleaning pads. The scrubber side powers through even the toughest baked on food mess, and the sponge side cleans glassware and even okay, your fine china without scratching. Okay, Use Scrubby real fast. Also for a Deal or done. How many do we need? Deal. We're going to go through a few of these. Deal. Raise your hand. Give me your hand if it's a deal. deal. No. Uh, give me your hand if it's a dud. Okay, so most people thought it was a deal, so plus on the deal side. We're not going to do the actual numbers. Okay, next one. Okay. So now we're going to look for clear product shots. Notice people sometimes will make these demo videos for me, and the whole time it's their face. And I'm like, what are you selling? What's the product? Shoot to the product. I want to see the product. <laughs> okay. I don't know why this one is so warm. It's zip seal. Okay, you got it. This one is a little lower. It's not going to be as loud. Okay. Keeping food fresh, but if they aren't sealed tightly, they can leave a real mess. If you ever have any trouble or hate sealing zipper lock bags, you'll absolutely love this. Introducing the Zip Sealer, the easiest and fastest way to seal zipper lock bags every time you use it. The Zip Sealer is the perfect yet simple solution that solves a common problem that millions of people deal with every day, tightly sealing any type of zipper lock bag. Zip Sealer's precision and ergonomic design is extremely comfortable and easy to use. Perfectly seal any type of zipper locking bag with a single swipe. Okay, that's it. Zip Sealer's so rollers. now if you notice these custom, these, these, the pendameter of them, two minutes, right? Problem solution, problem solution, and then offer, problem solution, problem solution. Okay. Um, how many think Zip Sealer was a deal? Deal. Deal? deal. deal. How many think that? Okay, on this one we're going to look at the bonus offers. We're going to go to the end. Mm -hmm. The tri erase board is handy, but can quickly become a smeared mess. Traditional tri erase boards wear down over time. Even hanging them can be quite a pain. Doesn't fit. Never level. Introducing Tri Erase Plus, the revolutionary new stick anywhere tri erase service that lasts a lifetime. With Tri Erase Plus, you can use dry erase markers, plus crayons, plus permanent marker, plus tape, stickers, and more. Watch as we put Tri Erase Plus to the test. The traditional board was ruined forever, but the Tri Erase Plus side cleans easily using only alcohol. That's amazing. I need one for my class. Simply peel and stick. It goes on quick. Flexible Dry Erase Plus is easy to apply and never bunches up. Its low impact adhesive is damage free and can be easily moved. It is so much easier than moving a bulky board. Cut into fun designs for creative wall space. Try our medium clear to add transparent dry erase anywhere. Use it on your fridge for notes on your desk. Trim to fit any space like inside cabinet doors. Through this exclusive TV offer, you can bring home easy to move, easy to clean dry erase plus and large and medium clear for the incredibly low price of $19.95. But wait, there's more. Call now and we'll include 34 dry erase plus labels as our gift to you. Dry erase plus labels are perfect for labeling storage bins, house Okay, notice the black and white. I notice a lot of the commercials when they're talking about the problem, it's <coughs> black and white. And then they'll move to color, like oh, the Wizard yeah. of Oz. <laughs> okay. So also notice problem solution, problem solution. That methodology in your videos. You don't want to do the whole, some people send these videos and they're like, the size of the market is bad, 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 bad. We know all that. We want to see the product. 
Okay, deal or dud? Deal. Deal, dud. Look at that. Dud. Not even but dud, yeah. Okay, next one. We How much time do I have? But supersize here, and you get supersized here, too. Relax <laughs> <laughs> battle with the skinny plates. Easily portion control for everyday life. Developed by nutritional and medical experts, the skinny blade has properly divided sections to give you the right amount of calories and power to protein, vegetables, and carbs. By turning calories to volume and simply by reducing portion size, you can start the weight loss process. No matter your size or weight goal, there is a skinny plate for you. Simply choose the plate for your target weight and fill your plate and put this All right, that's it. Deal or dead? Dead. Okay, next one. Okay, now here's, okay, now this is, I want you to notice the testimonials are good, but the secret material. Start looking at, this is the use of animation, and there's uh, one person here that's got a product we talked about where you want the secret animation. You want the, uh, the material is great, or make it look new, make it look fancy. It's all marketing language. Oh, look out. No, where did he come from? You check and check and you still can't see everything. Now you can practically say goodbye to blind spots with Extra View Mirror. The extra wide rear view mirror that gives you a true 180 degree panoramic view. Look, ordinary rear view only give you a field of view this wide. But Extra View expands your rear visibility to a full 180 degrees. The secret is convex anti-glare chrome coated glass. That chrome coated glass? Really wide, so nothing will hide. With Extra View, you're seeing a Okay, that's it. Okay. Deal. 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 Okay. Deal. 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 Yes, okay. ma'am. That's why I. It's about the target market. Yes, ma'am. Okay. What else? 
Solves the problem. Solves the problem. problem. Yeah. Okay. What about the commercials? What did you notice? What are things that you can incorporate into your own little demo videos? The problem is to fix. Sounds and sparkles are good. Sounds are the, the, the shrimp cooking. Our magic mesh, have you seen that product? They, they magnets click, click, click. Sales went up tremendously when we added the click, click, click. So little things like that. Okay, so I'll tell you what uh, the reality of the situation is. It's not good. <laughs> this one did not make it. Killed me. We thought it was a winner. You could tell that was a prototype. Also, uh, if you notice, the commercials got better. This is my life. This did not make it. This did not make it. This, we fought for a year on that. Did not make it. It made it to the middle. It made it to the middle. Um, the skinny plate. Did not make it. A hundred and fifty thousand dollars was spent on this to not make it over a six-month period. The numbers just didn't come out. Now this is why I come out here because you know what? A big company, the co our partners, those guys I work with, they can afford this. It's no big deal. Most of you cannot. It's your kids' college. It's your four hundred one k money, and that's why I like licensing to as seen on TV because you can get in for a very low cost and your upside is big. Okay, so Extra View Mirror. Yes. It was kind of, yeah, I would say it's a single. It did have some minor rollout, but it was not what you would think. These two, big winners. Big winners. I'll buy a dust daddy right now. So, so if you notice, the commercials, the commercial for this one wasn't as strong. That when, when you saw the these two, those were probably commercials that had been redone five or six times. Because every test cycle, you redo it and you change things and you make it better. All right? So you're, it was pretty much how things go. Okay? Why did the mirror make it? I, we, we tested everything here. Everything here, we had a hand in the test process. Yeah, but why didn't it make it briefly? Because people didn't buy it on enough scale. Because As Seen on TV is a Grand Slam home run. Right. And that's why, so only like 10% of the stuff I look like look at is even going to have a chance. That's why I have 90% because I need to put chips on the table. It's gambling with time and money. good though. I don't know. Well, I know, but not enough people bought it. Now, any of these products, it doesn't mean they're bad products, and it doesn't mean the inventor can't make money selling the product somewhere. Right. They're just not going to be multi-million dollar winners. They're just not. It, what they can be, though, is they can, they can sell in the kitchen gadget section. Right. And so let's talk money outside of TV. Okay. So if you license your product outside of TV, now make and sell it is a whole different game. You're going to make the product, you're going to sell it, you're going to make money on the manufacturing, the wholesale. But if you license a product outside of TV, you're going to get a higher royalty rate. So in TV, it's maybe 1% to 5% because volumes are huge. Right, right. Outside of TV, you might be able to get 5 to 7 maybe you get 10 if you're lucky. But that still, yearly, is going to be a lot less cash. Right. So in the licensing agreements I do, the things that are not TV, an average amount of money per year is twenty to $40,000. Um, a medium-sized one might be fifty to ninety thousand dollars. A much better one, fifty thousand is a common number. At a five percent royalty, you can make about fifty thousand dollars a year if they sell one million pieces per year. So one million dollars, I mean, one million dollars, uh, which which is doable. That's a that's a good realistic goal. You know, if you get up into one hundred fifty thousand, two hundred thousand, more, those are unusual. Those are more unusual. They absolutely happen, but they're not the norm. And so that's why it's good to have those. It's good to have singles, doubles, and triples, especially if you can get more of them. But, you know, the as seen on TV winners are where the big money is and the upside and the costs are low. So whatever <laughs> category you're in, I think it's good to keep the costs low. Yeah. All right. The bottom line is on any one of these, because I've seen it already in my own product line where I want to have products. It's largely because the other products stink. They're not that good. So Dust Daddy and Rahitza 
I like it. I'm convinced. But do you guys test the actual? Is does Renitsa really work that good? That's a, or do nobody care? To renew? No, people do care.